The Brooklyn Bridge, built in 1883, is one of the most memorable and iconic structures in New York City and in the world. At its inception, the bridge was a symbol for the powerful new energy of the American city and an innovative transit artery carrying 425,000 passengers a day on its cable railway and streetcars and by bike, foot and carriage. Sadly, these collective transit facilities were demolished in the 1950s to make way for the automobile. And today, the bridge moves a little more than 100,000 people a day, less than a third of its original capacity, many stuck in traffic below or crammed together on the dangerous shared walkway above. The result is a bridge that has become better at moving cars than it is at moving people. The Brooklyn Bridge is wonderful. It's a good bridge to walk across. It's not a good bridge to ride a bicycle across. It's really hot and crowded. Um, and during these times of COVID, it would really help to have more distance between the people. Tons of cars is like right beside both of the sides. And it's like very kind of like the air is just kind of like a little bit more polluted. I've actually been taking up biking recently. I've loved it so far. It's uh, changed my perspective when it comes to traveling. With Back to the Future, we propose a radical but incremental rethinking of the Brooklyn Bridge that takes advantage of congestion pricing and other innovations that will reduce and redistribute car traffic around our urban core. Beginning with the introduction of safe, dedicated bike lanes, slowly transitioning to include dedicated public transit routes, expanded space for pedestrians, and finally paving the way for an electric and autonomous future. Towards New York Harbor, the resulting plaza in the sky is proposed as a flexible space, accommodating new sweeping views, quiet spaces for reflection, and a diversity of activities for New Yorkers, changing with the seasons and evolving over time. At the bridge anchorages, Legacy car infrastructure has strangled the historic bridge walls, impeded access to the waterfront and divided communities from one another for decades. As the bridge transitions away from vehicular use, these ramps can be removed and life brought back to the historic vaults and their surroundings. 32 acres of public realm, more than five times the area of the High Line, will be created reconnecting neighborhoods and offering natural and recreational spaces for adjacent communities and a growing city. In Dumbo, legacy city properties can be rethought and create spaces that will welcome New Yorkers of all stripes. Meanwhile, New York has been quickly changing around us. COVID-19 has revealed a city in urgent need of more public realm as New Yorkers take back their streets for play and for commerce. And nationwide protests have shown us what streets focused on people rather than cars might actually look like. As our aging subway system strains to keep up with demands and we look for new and safe ways to commute in the coming years, the creation of safe, dedicated, shaded corridors for biking and collective transit is the most high impact and low cost urban investment we can make towards our recovery. These corridors can be interwoven seamlessly with the existing network of vehicular streets, creating a binary city that makes room for both people and for logistical demands. As innovations at the Brooklyn Bridge and other bridges are piloted, this network of people streets can branch out to reach across the city, strategically linking to the neighborhoods that need them the most. And as the Brooklyn Bridge did one and a half centuries ago, bringing New York back to the forefront of urban innovation.